So we're going to attempt to calculate the center of mass between two objects or three objects. Um, and in a gravitational context, when you're talking about a planet and its moon or a planet and the star that it orbits, um, that location is known as the barycenter of those two objects. So to try and explain the idea of center of mass, if you have a, a planet and you have a moon like so, the barycenter is the location between the two where if they were connected by a lever, you could put a fulcrum and have them balance like a teeter-totter. Now, of course, planets and moons are not connected by rods, um, and they don't have giant uh, fulcrum for you to rest on. But if you have this place, this arbitrary place in space, where uh, the, their center of mass is located, what you end up with is a location that the two of them will orbit mutually. So the planet will orbit this location, as will the moon. etc. So that as the planet moves through along this orbit, the moon stays opposed to it on the other side of that very center. So this is the way that two objects orbit each other. Um, so the idea that the Earth is at the center and that the moon goes around it um, and the Earth is sort of fixed in place is not how it works. Uh, the same idea that, that the sun is at the center and the earth moves around it and the sun is a fixed location is not how it works either. Uh, if you have something, well, if anything is orbiting any other thing, like the heavier thing stays closer to this very center, but it is not exactly dead center. So uh, there's one method for hunting for exoplanets, in fact, that, that uses this uh, fact to hunt for a really fat planet around a star. If you have a star that is executing a circular pattern, the only way for that to be doing that is if there's something very massive at the center, like a black hole, or if there's another big planet whose uh, gravity is sufficient to move the center of mass of the, the planet star system outside of the actual star, and you can watch it wobble around and around and around. Um, in fact, Jupiter is able to do that to our sun, um, and you'll be able to calculate that in the problems when we get there. Um, so for now, if I can get rid of these little dotted blue lines here to make some room, the location of the Berry Center um, requires you to establish an, uh, an origin, so some place that we can measure um, our vectors from because this will be a thing that that requires both the size of the masses and their location so I'm gonna have to do this with vectors if I were to pick a random spot like like here perhaps then I would end up with if this is object A and this is object B I would have a vector that points to the location of object A and I would have a vector that points to the location of vector B. And if I do that, if I take the mass of object A multiplied by the vector pointing at A's location, and I add to it the mass of B multiplied by the vector identifying object B's location, what I end up with is the mass of object A plus the mass of object B pointing at some new vector that will identify the location of the Berry Center. <coughs> so that's this vector here pointing to this spot. Okay. So this mathematical relationship works um, for any choice of origin. Um, once I establish where that origin is, I just have to identify the coordinates of A relative to this or origin, the coordinates of B relative to this origin, and then I will have a very center location returned relative to that um, origin choice. 
So I could do this and that would be fine. Um, but there are smarter choices to make here than putting an, or, uh, an origin way out in the middle of nowhere. For example, um, if we were doing this calculation for the Earth and the Moon, I'm not going to choose an, uh, an origin off in the middle of space. That doesn't make any sense. The place that would make more sense is for me to use the center of Earth as the origin. Is if I did that, then I'm measuring the location of the Berry Center relative to the center of the planet I'm standing on. Um, and that's going to make a, a little more, um, it's going to be easier for me to interpret anyway. So I'm going to take this diagram, I'm going to modify it so that my origin is located on object A. I'll have to just erase this here. Okay, so if I chose my origin to land directly on this, it's going to change a few things. Um, so first off, where is the location of A if A is the origin? Well, this vector then, the position of object A is 0, 0. It's right on the origin. If I put a zero vector in here, then that term disappears. You can see why this is a little easier to do if you choose the origin on one of the objects in question. This one, the vector to B, becomes this vector here. And if I do that, what that ends up being is simply the separation between A and B. So if I know that the Earth and Moon are 3.84 times 10 to the 8 meters apart, then this vector here becomes 3.84 times 10 to the 8 meters in the horizontal direction and 0 in the y direction. So by choosing to orient the problem this way, and by choosing to set the origin directly on object A, not only have I eliminated one term in my math structure, but I've also eliminated the second dimension in this. This is now a one-dimensional problem. So if I were to fill this in for the Earth-Moon system, I'd need the mass of the Moon, which is 7.35, times 10 to the 22, and the position of the moon is 3.84 times 10 to the 8 meters away. And just so that you can see what's happening when we get to the three object, um, three object example, I'm going to leave this zero in there for the, the horizontal or the vertical component, <clears throat> just so you can see what happens there when we get to a more complicated example. Now, that's supposed to equal the mass of the first object, which was 5.98 times 10 to the 24, plus the mass of the second one, times 10 to the 22, multiplied by a vector leading me to the very center of that system. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of work here. Calculator on 7.35 times 10 to the 22 multiplied by 3.84 times 10 to the 8 gives me 2.824 to 24, sorry, times 10 to the 31, comma 0, which again isn't necessary for this particular one dimensional example, but I'm going to leave it there so you can see so that this example looks similar to the the next one we do. 5.98 times 10 to the 24 plus 7.35 times 10 to the 22. That doesn't work. 5.98 times 10 to the 24 plus 7.35 times 10 to the 22 gives me 6.0535 times 10 to the 24. Move this vector to the very center. Okay, so divide this by this. 
of 2.8224 times 10 to the 31 divided by 6.0535 times 10 to the 24, comma 0 equals my vector to the very center. C E N T R E. So my vector towards the very center will be that number in the denominator times 2.8224 times 10 to the 31 gives me 4662426.695 meters. Well, I guess make that comma zero. So do you notice that this horizontal component turned out positive? Well, that's good because the, the center of mass between the Earth and the Moon should be in this direction. And it has it that far away. Uh, now I'm going to put this in uh, scientific notation so we can maybe interpret this number a little better. Uh, three, six. That is 4.66 times 10 to the 6 meters, comma 0. All right. Good. So what does that mean? It means that the center of mass, the place that the moon and the earth mutually orbit because of their masses affecting each other, is located 4.66 times 10 to the 6 meters from the center of the earth in the direction of the moon. So I'm going to erase all this math work in the middle and I'm going to leave that particular um, line there so that we can maybe draw a picture of that. Okay, so the thing that I would like to point out to you is that the Earth has a radius of 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters. And what we've just calculated is that the center of the Earth-Moon system is located 4.66 times 10 to the 6 meters in the, from the center of the Earth in the direction of the Moon. So if the Moon is over here, 4.66 times 10 to the 6 to scale is about two-thirds of the way. So the Moon is almost massive enough and almost far enough away and or almost far enough away to be able to bring the center of mass of the Earth-Moon system above the surface of the Earth. Not quite, but close. So as the Earth is turning once every 24 hours, the Moon and the Earth orbit each other once every 27 and a half days. And the Earth, while it's spinning around the circle, has to swing around that center of mass point. So you can, the example of, of trying to find a star by this method, right? Like if you had a star that was turning itself like so regularly with a path like that, you can't have a black hole in the center of a star making that happen. That's, that's, not, <laughs> that's not a thing. So the only option would be if you had some massive object here that was used as a wrench to sort of turn this whole system around. I, I tried to draw this uh, down in the notes so you can take a look at it. Okay, uh, so the, the neat thing about Earth and the Moon is if this were a little bit further out, so if either the Moon was a touch heavier or if it drifts a little bit further away, so that we lift this center of mass out above the planet's surface, so the planet actually is not orbiting itself, it's orbiting some arbitrary place in space, then the Earth and the Moon are no longer a planet and Moon system. They become a double planet type system, right? Like a binary, where two objects are gravitationally locked, but they are both in motion around some arbitrary point in space. Now that's neat. Uh, as far as planets go, Earth and Moon are the only <laughs> planet-defined objects that actually behave that way. 
uh, when you get to Saturn or Jupiter, um, those planets are so massive compared to their moons that their moons can make them wobble, but they can't actually torque them around. Okay, so that's Earth and the Moon. I will sort of let that lie there for a minute, um, and then we'll try a three-object system. All right, so the idea with Barry Center for three masses is it uses a very similar um, type structure. You need to establish an origin first, then there will be a vector identifying the location of A, a vector locating uh, the identifying the location of object C, and a vector identifying the location of object B, and then the mass of A plus the mass of B plus the mass of C multiplied by a vector identifying the location of the Berry Center can be calculated by doing MA RA plus MB RB plus MC RC. Now that, that's identical to what we had before. I've just had to add in a third term for the third object. So with a, a gravitational grouping of objects, I mean, I can pick an arbitrary uh, Berry Center or an arbitrary origin, sorry, to identify the location of those three objects. But like the last example, if I made smarter choices, I could eliminate some of these more complicated mathematical elements. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move the origin away from this arbitrary point in space, and I'm going to actually lock it on top of object A. And if we were doing this on an actual system of objects, I would probably make system or object A the heaviest one in the system, because it's the most important. The Berry Center will be closest to that particular object. So if I redraw with this new choice of origin, then immediately I have eliminated this term because the location of object A relative to object A is zero. It is on the origin. So I've eliminated a term. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this problem, which was just sort of twisted, and I'm going to orient it so that the next heaviest object is directly horizontal uh, so that I, I don't have to deal with all these extra angles. So if I take object A and I make object B directly horizontal from object A. I kind of missed there. That's all right. Then the vector for RB is just going to be the, the separation between A and B, so there'll be a number here, and then zero in the vertical component because I've chosen to orient the problem this way. That means that object C will be something like this. And so really all I need in order to identify the location of object C is this angle here, alpha. And if I knew that, then I'd be able to um, write the vector for RC and I'd be able to do my very center stuff. So I'm going to park some numbers on here and we'll see what we can do.
All right, so I'm going to uh, set these, the problem up this way. So I have three masses. Uh, one is approximately Earth size. One's about the third of the size of Earth. So it's maybe like Mars size. And then something that is smaller than that even. Now I have drawn lines connecting all these things and shown the relative distance between all three objects. So I need to be able to set my um, origin someplace. So I'm going to set it on the heaviest object. I'm going to make one of the objects up over here. And then I'm going to make, <clears throat> uh, I'm going to have to figure out this angle here so I can find the location of object C. All right, so in order to do that, I need this angle because I need, a, I need it there to split this up into components, horizontal and vertical. I happen to know three sides of that triangle, so I can solve that with uh, cosine law. So I'm going to set that up. Uh, C squared is A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine, um, the angle between them. So if 2.5 squared, um, and notice that all of these are power 10 to the 7, so I can just um, strip that out for a minute uh, and tack it on at the end. Uh, be 4 squared plus 3 squared minus 2 times 4 times 3 times the cosine of alpha. Uh, 2.5 squared is 6.25, I think. <laughs> yep. So 6.25 is 16 plus 9, 2 times 4 is 8, 8 times 3 is 24. Kick the 16, or 16 and 9 is uh, 25. And don't, please, for the love of God, do not do 25 minus 24. This thing has a cos alpha attached to it, so you cannot gather those terms together. Instead, I'm going to kick that over. Six point two five minus twenty five is negative eighteen point seven five. Divide both sides by negative twenty four. I get cos alpha is zero point seven eight one two five. And if I arc coast that, I'm going to make sure I'm in degrees because this is physics class. Arc coast of that answer is 38.62 degrees. Okay. I'm going to fill that in there. And then I'm going to clear this mess off the board because I don't need this calculation anymore. I'm going to use that angle in order to break up the vector from A to C into two components. So if I can draw it, I have this vector here that is 3 times 10 to the 7 long. And it has a horizontal component and it has a vertical component. That's the x, that's the y. I have an angle in here that's 38.62. Now, you've done this before in the uh, two-dimensional mechanics unit. Um, anything that is an adjacent component is going to be cosine. So my uh, vector to C would be 3 times 10 to the 7 cosine of 38.62. And my vertical component, because it's headed down, will be negative. 3 times 10 to the 7, sine of 38.762. So I will end up with 3 times cosine of 38.62 is 2.344 times 10 to the 7. 
3.3 times sine 38.62 gives me 1.872 times 10 to the 7. Okay. We oriented this problem this way specifically so that the vector to B would be purely horizontal at 4 times 10 to the 7 comma 0. So in this Berry Center setup, I have enough information now to work out the location of that Berry Center. So in this bracket, I will have 6 times 10 to the 24 plus 2 times 20, 10 to the 24 plus 7 times 10 to the 23 r to the Berry Center. And I'm going to have a whole bunch of mass over on this side. It'll be the mass of B, which is 7 times 10 to the 23, multiplied by 4 times 10 to the 7, comma 0. That's the mass of B and the location of B, plus the mass of C, 2 times 10 to the 24, multiplied by its location, which is this number here, 2.344 times 10 to the 7, comma negative 1.872 times 10 to the 7. <laughs> Gross. So I'm going to add these three numbers together. That will end up being 8.7 times 10 to the 24. Vector to the Berry Center. 7 times 10 to the 23 multiplied by 4 times 10 to the 7 would be 2.8 times 10 to the 31. I'm just going to double check that. 7, 23 times 4, 7. Okay, perfect. 2 times 10 to the 24, oh, and I need the vertical component there. 0 plus 2 times 10 to the 24 multiplied by 2.344 times 10 to the 7 will be 4.688 times 10 to the 31 and 2 times negative 1.87 will be uh, 3.8 one three times ten to the thirty one. I'm going to check that one. <laughs> Four, it's not even close. 1.872 10 to the power 7 times 2 times 10 to the power 24. Yeah, okay, well, I tried. Sigh. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of this because it's in my way. So I have 8.7 times 10 to the 24 times the vector to the Berry Center. When you have vectors adding, you add the horizontals together and the verticals together. So 2.8 and 4.688, sorry, 2.8 times 10 to the 31 plus 4.688 times 10 to the 31 gives me 7.488 times 10 to the 31. And 0 and this number would be negative 3.744 times 10 to the 31. So I need to divide both of those numbers by 8.7 times 10 to the 24. So my vector to the Berry Center should be 
8.607 times 10 to the 6 and 3.744 times 10 to the 31 divided by 8.7 times 10 to the 24 gives me 4.303 times 10 to the 31. No, times 10 to the 6. 10 to the 6. Okay, so I'm going to copy that vector up here so that I can get this off of my face. Alright, so how do we know this is correct? Well, the center of mass should be somewhere between A and B. It shouldn't be beyond B anyway. So this number is considerably less than 4 times 10 to the 7. It's uh, about a fifth of the way. Ish. This should still be down, right? The mass from C is going to drag the center of mass downwards, so I should have a negative component, which is encouraging. But it shouldn't be as far down as, as this one is. So that number is considerably less than this by, by a factor of 10 almost. So I'm just going to go and I'm going to work out this uh, component. I'm going to reconstruct it as a single vector, um, which again you did when we were doing the collision problems. Um, so I have a vector that is 8.607 long times 10 to the 6 and a vector that is 4.303 times 10 to the 6 b. And so I want to know how far the barycenter is from object A. That's the vector I want here. That's 90 degrees. This is an, uh, an angle I'm after. So I can get the length of this with Pythagorean theorem. So clear 8.607 squared plus 4.303 squared. I'm going to square root that gives me 9.623 times 10 to the 6 and I will get that angle by doing tan beta is the opposite 4.303 divided by the adjacent 8.607 Beta is the arctan of 4.303 divided by 8.607, 0 0.499999. I bet that would be 5 if I hadn't done so much rounding. So the arctan of that answer gives me 26.6 degrees. Now that is also encouraging because it is less than the 38.62. So if I were to try and find this on my picture, if that was a 38 degree angle, then a 26 degree angle is probably like this. Ish. And if this is 9.623 times 10 to the 6, that's almost a 10 to the 7. Um, this is 4 10 to the 7s, so that would be about here. The very center of that, that system is then located right about there. Halfway between A and C, halfway between B and C, and it's not between B and C because this massive object over there has really pulled it. I'm closer to it. All right, good. So if this was a real object and those things were in real uh, locations, then the way they would orbit is around this common center of mass. This is what the Pluto system looks like. And this is why, uh, more part of the reason why Pluto was demoted from being a full planet to being a dwarf planet because its moon, uh, Charon, 
is big enough or far enough away that it has lifted their berry center off of the surface. Add to that that there are, there are also other chunks of stuff out there that are big enough to move this center of mass from between the pluto charon system. And if you can think of this in three dimensions, right? these objects don't have to turn in a plane. These two could be turning this way, and this one could be winging around like that which makes for a very interesting system because as soon as this lo this object moves out of plane it will have lifted this berry center up which will have changed how these two roll around each other so this whole system sort of rolls chaotically through space with a berry center that's perpetually in motion between the three major objects um, as they roll around their orbit neat so this is largely a mathematical exercise trying to find the Berry Center. Um, so like I said earlier, the problem sets ask you to do the Berry Center between Jupiter and the Sun to see that it is indeed outside the surface of the Sun. Um, and then there are three random objects that it asks you to try and do this type of calculation for. So good luck.